Welcome back to the State and Local Sports Show here with Mark Tennis, the co-founder and editor of CalISports.com. We're going to dive into today a bit of the Sac Joaquin section's realignment process, meeting three of five today. It's a really strange, sometimes tedious process. Uh, sometimes you feel like you're watching C-SPAN for high school sports. It can be kind of dull. But you have moments like today where there are proposals out of nowhere. It's dramatic and kind of a stunner, and you hear these little murmurs through the crowd. It's almost like a movie. Um, I, I, I missed it in person, but the day started today with Mark Lurero, the, the winningest football coach in Sac Joaquin section history. Was Escalon is a beloved guy brought up a gong and said ready for round three so and it made me think you know who are some of your favorite sports personalities in this section not to be funny necessarily but who are the ones that kind of stand out to you from the sack joaquin section well you mentioned um coach luero well, the the coach that he passed um, as the winningest in section history max miller is one of the great characters of the section um used to coach at cordova high school and in fact, tomorrow I'm going to the Max Miller Clinic of Champions. It's one of the biggest coaching clinics in, in the Western United States in Sacramento. And, and uh, Max uh, is a Hall of Famer and a funny guy. And then his uh, Cordova High baseball coach, athletic director, uh, Guy Anderson, is one of the most classy guys and fun guys I've ever been around. And I've been around Coach Schneider, Wayne Schneider of Tracy, many times over the years. And he's he's also one of my all-time favorites as far as personalities. Always has a lot of funny stories and things like that to talk about. There's so many from this section. I look at Mike Albergini, the grand football coach. Not, not as uh, gregarious maybe as some of his other on this list, but a really warm person, a guy who's meant in the – a huge amount to a to a, a what can be a tough community in Sacramento. You saw one of their players had a tragic passing last year. Uh, the Sheldon softball coach Mary Joe Tuesdale, immense success, almost like a maternal figure to her players. Got to um, get the marbles. Got to get those marbles. Yep. The marbles. She has these marbles she gives to the kids. It's pretty <laughs> funny. She's pretty classic. Yeah, you, you, for sure. <laughs> you mentioned Max Miller. Made me think of Mark Miller, the uh, the longtime Linden football coach. Oh, He's yeah. still the softball coach. I once saw him uh, drop. A, a bag of M&Ms out of his pocket during a softball game and picked him up like nothing happened. He's hilarious. He's a great. I mean, he's probably one of the best texters of any coach that I cover, which is incredible giving. He's one of the older coaches that I cover, so I find that impressive. And then Rob Spencer, the coach of Modesto, Christian girls basketball, just energy incarnate. I mean, great interview. You can tell how much he loves his team. I mean, he greets them with jumping shoulder bumps for their pregame warm-ups. You don't see that quite often, so no. a few of my favorites. Uh, Modesto Christian, definitely on the menu today. They are still on track via the latest realignment proposal to join the TCAL, which is St. Mary's, Lincoln, Lodi Toke, Wes and Tracy for for basketball only. A motion to keep them in their current Modesto Metro Conference was struck down 5-4 to four by the realignment committee, so this initial idea keeps chugging along for now. I like the idea of them in the TCAL, but it's kind of just as a reporter, you know, the rivalries, there are some rivalries that could bloom maybe, the, them and St. Mary's is parochial power type schools and maybe some enticing league races. It's hard for me to argue with them not wanting to be in an all San Joaquin County league, and they don't, and travel for an hour against uh, for games against the Lodi schools that they're probably going to win easily. You know, in, in that case, they might as well stay in their conference. What, what do you think about where MC should be? I almost feel like maybe, especially the boys' program, should be an independent like the St. Mary's girls because of how far they've gotten over the past uh, few years. They've been independent in the past. Um, they're probably more of a natural fit in the Valley Oak League, but that opens up a, a lot of other different cans of worms. Um, it is an hour, but it's also an hour for the local schools to go to to go to Modesto Christian when they have to play them. So I don't know how that's going to work. But you're right; there could be a St. Mary's Modesto Christian rivalry. The Modesto Christian program is just something that's always going to evolve. Um, for all we know, in five years they're going to be you know even bigger, uh, even bigger program, dominating the section in the highest division like they were in the in the 90s and late 90s. Um, are they going to go back toward that level of domination where they're playing for open division state championships year in, year out? It's possible. They might. They're going to get the players with the coaching. They've had some coaching uh, you know, changes, and, and there seem to be a little bit of instability there. But, you know, they've got the players. They've got the track record, and, and it's going to be an evolving situation for many, many years, not just this current realignment cycle. Yeah, but Modesto Christian, if they had to move, they would like the idea of joining the Valley Oak League. They cited how much more success in the postseason VOL teams have had. 
but you know, I, I feel like it's more likely for them to stay juggernauts than for the VOL, especially basketball wise, to be as good as it has been. I think it's reached kind of an apex. I mean, even this year for boys basketball, it's a bit of a downswing. Think about all the guys who graduated Wooten, Hundal, Jalen Ragsdale, Fred Lavender. I'm not saying that there's not going to be another class like that, but it's kind of rare for a medium school yeah. league to have so many great basketball players. Correct, yes. Uh, speaking of Western Ranch and the Manteca Unified Schools, they brought a stunner to many today. The five schools in that district, that is the three Manteca schools, East Union, Sierra, Manteca, plus Lathrop and Western Ranch, proposed a VOL that kicks out Main State Oakdale and Central Catholic, which has dominated especially in football since coming in three years ago. Uh, a lot of the information they cited, and Sierra's athletic director, Anthony Chapman, was speaking on the district's behalf, was football. He said pretty much verbatim that, that friendships need to be put aside in this case. It's obvious that Oakdale's rep, Norm Antonetti, who's also the league's commissioner, is not too happy. That didn't get put through. The proposal uh, that got put through had seven of the current eight teams there, moving Lathrop down to the WAC, a Division Four league. Uh, when you hear of someone proposing trying to, to move out Oakdale and Central Catholic, I mean, it's, it's entertaining at, mm-hmm. at the very least. It was certainly one of the more dramatic things to happen in this process so far. Well, especially because Manteca and Oakdale have played uh, against each other for just about every year since the early 1920s in football. So for, for that to happen where Manteca Unified is trying to do some something where they don't want to be part of the same league as Oakdale is, it is a stunner. It also reminds me of a kind of realignment problems around the state and that you have, I don't know if it's a problem, but but school districts generally around the state, they all want to stick together. All the schools in their districts stick together. So it's not Manteca Unified has made a move today that you know, obviously they want to stay, stay together. And th- the same things you'll see in Elk Grove or the same things you'll see in Southern California at Long Beach. And and uh, a lot of times that can be a problem with competitive equity because uh, you'll have one school and the league will be really good in one sport and then everybody else isn't very good in that sport, but they all want to stay together in the same league and it just creates some difficult situations. A lot of times it's better, in my opinion, for some of these school districts to break themselves up a little bit and be in different leagues and think a little bit more outside the box because it'll, there'll be more competitive situations for a lot of the teams in their district. Now, Mark Tennis, you do a weekly column for us. I had to full name you there on the record and uh, recordnet.com. Could you tell us a bit about what you're writing uh, writing about this week? Well, I wrote this week about a uh, little bit about the Lions All Star football game. We had a meeting the other night with the two coaches, where the two coaches met each other Dustin Corpareza from um, Los Banos and uh, Willie Herrera from East Union, and that got me thinking about some promotional ideas because my role in the Lions game is as the public relations volunteer may help the game in that capacity so it's a much different hat that I put on when I'm in that role than when I'm you know going to a game or doing the website or many other things and and one of the ideas that we had of course with East Union playing in the game or being the coach in the game is uh, Vinny Vinny Therese um, uh, you know they scored that unbelievable touchdown for uh, East Union. He has Down syndrome and he scored that last touchdown of the season, the last play of the game, the last deal against Del Campo. And, and you know, we talking to the coach, you know, I, you think as a promoter, oh, maybe we can get him to do it in our game. And it was such an organic, you know, thing that happened in that game. I think it would cheapen it. And um, he kind of agreed. And so, but, but uh, you know, we did find out that he's going to try to get Vinny to be at the game. Um, but again, it's, it's mainly about the Lions game and the kids in the game itself. And just the, the column is about, you know, kind of the, the game and, and some of the discussions we had about promoting it. And that's what that, that, that's what that was. That's what this one's about. Uh, the St. Mary's girls basketball team, a team we saw on a 57-game winning streak last year. They were a national number one, still very highly ranked in the state this year, with just a lot of tough luck with injuries. Uh, now you see Akira DaCosta, star forward, a junior, a torn meniscus. Could be a three-month recovery, could be a few weeks recovery, depending on what type of surgical approach they might take. You have San Diego State-bound guard Najee Mary still in the final stages of her torn ACL recovery. Another potential starting guard, Nicole Young, also out for a knee injury. I mean, they're still the obvious number one ranked team in this area, but if DaCosta, even if she comes back not full strength or tentative, this could be a short state playoff run for this team. They usually kind of run through the sections, so I don't, I don't want to make any predictions there, but uh, you know, they're going to be in the open division for the foreseeable future as far as my understanding is, and I, I think, you know, if DaCosta's hurt, if Murray's not back, or if she's hurt or limited, who knows? I mean, it, it could be tough going. Could be tough going. It kind of depends on how, 
you know, a couple of those things come together, if they they still probably will win the Division One section title, that that's the first thing to, to look at, and they still may have the may be the team to beat in that. And then if they get to the open division, it's, it would depend on where they get seated. Um, if they have to play Archbishop Mitty right away, uh, there probably would be a quick a quick tr- a quick uh, visit to the open division. If they have to play Clovis West of Fresno, maybe yeah, quick they're gone. But if they play anybody else, um, a lot of the teams in Northern California, when you get down after the first couple, have some major holes. So on a game in, a, a, a night in, night out basis, you don't know what's going to happen. So no, they they actually could win a, maybe a game, even even as depleted as they are, because it's just not that great of a season after the first couple of teams. You talk about a great experience too for their prominent players who are younger. They have a freshman guard named Amaya Oliver. No matter what happens to them, she's going to benefit from getting a ton of playing time no in, the, in the state playoff game. All right, for uh, the CalHighSports.com Gold Club, all your insider content, state record books, rankings, anything you could want to read. Uh, less than twenty bucks a year, less than two dollars a month. And thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks again, Thomas. Have a great weekend.